Okay, we are ready and we are starting for tonight. Welcome to another webinar of night. Uh, I want to say welcome to our speakers and also our attendants. Uh, and thank you so much for coming and uh, being to being with us tonight. Uh, tonight we will be uh, with Jurgen Bart. But uh, before that, as usual, uh, as we discuss every week, every piece of organization, sorry. Uh, I want to start with Klaus Meyer, and I know you are, you need to hear the news because we collected our uh, results for our last week, for the first week of the uh, June, and uh, Klaus will explain you how is it going on, uh, what are the results, and how is it going about the COVID virus, and especially our pharmacists around the world. Uh, I want to give the floor to the Klaus Meyer, here you are. Yeah, good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, and it uh, is switching better. So Ahmed, when it does not run, please uh, <laughs> tell it to me. Uh, this is uh, the report after the ninth uh, week of recording. Uh, you can see the, the screen, what I will show you from the continents. This is Europe. Uh, the, the flag show how much hospitals have uh, been uh, 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 telling uh, their news. You see then uh, for each flag is one, one hospital or one person, one community pharmacy. You see in some countries more flags as less in others. Uh, you see here's the continent of Africa. I'm very pleased and happy about our colleagues in Africa. They are doing great work. And uh, I think uh, we, we are, uh, should have a good connection to them to support them as well. Uh, um, more uh, infos come uh, in from um, a small part of Asia, the biggest part of Asia is uh, Japan as well and uh, Vietnam, but uh, last week we had also announcement from uh, Iran and uh, thanks for this. You see uh, South Africa, uh, South America, <clears throat> and uh, when you see the flags, uh, you see the red ones that are the infected uh, hospitals, uh, pharmacies, and uh, the blue ones, the non-infected. And you see that uh, and now in the moment, the wave is running to South America. On the other hand side, we can see that uh, uh, this is a development we, we have uh, seen after this, that pharmacies who have been affected by infection have uh, been decreased. Now we have nearly around about, um, um, around about um, um, 25%. And you see when you see the curve, uh, it's struggling around uh, uh, 30, 35 to the lowest uh, degrees part. This is 20, 25.9. Uh, 
Okay, so what does it mean? How is the situation in the uh, hospitals as well? The, the votes come from, in this week, from 116 responses. Um, and nearly 70% are hospital pharmacists, 30% uh, 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 as well um, are, uh, are community pharmacists and then some physicians and other healthcare workers. Uh, to show where they come from, uh, it shows you they come from each uh, um, part when you have the question to those who have been saying that 83 from hospitals. So round, nearly round about, it's between more than 1,000 beds as well as uh, up to 200 uh, beds. Everything is, uh, every part is represented. And as well, it's interesting to see that there's a great number of intensive uh, care beds in these hospitals as well. Uh, that means that uh, also small hospitals uh, have a huge number of uh, a huge number of intensive care beds. What is related then to the activities of the hospitals to make uh, it ha happen that they will be uh, able to respond to infected uh, uh, patients with corona that they can treat them uh, in the right way. Um, as well, oncology beds, you see that uh, these hospitals are mostly related to uh, uh, cancer therapy because they have a huge amount of, uh, um, as well, of beds, but as well as in uh, question four, they have also a great number of intensive uh, care, uh, ambulatory care beds and uh, uh, shares for the day. So. When we look at this, what is the influence uh, of patients there? You see that now uh, nearly 36% uh, has uh, no isolated uh, uh, patients in the, in the wards, in the general wards. What have been uh, uh, re uh, registered, uh, re registered for this issue? And as well, you see that more than 50%, and that's the first time, they have no uh, uh, patients with uh, corona in their intensive uh, units. Uh, as well, the number of the uh, treatments for uh, cancer patients, what means planned operations has been decreased a little bit more than the week before. But what we see in question eight, that uh, uh, beginning from January, when we said we take the production of IV infusions to 100%, then we see that the de degrees from February to uh, May, I would say June, it's uh, one week, so it does not say so much, but the others are valid data from one month, you can see that the degrees of um, this uh, number of uh, 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 hospitals who have then less uh, prep uh, preparations of IV drugs uh, growing with the more months uh, coming. So in March, it was a little bit slower, but you see in April and as well in May, the number grow. That means the treatment of cancer patient has been um, not so good as it should be because of different uh, reasons. We have publications enough about that. I don't want to talk about this now. Have a good uh, a shortage in medicine uh, necessary for corona patients. Only 25% say yes. And you see when they say yes, it's 25, they say mostly medicine for intubation was a, a huge amount. They, they need it for the patients as well. Coming to the end, the question is, do you have shortage in medicine um, in, in, uh, in the treatment of cancer patients? And you see uh, that uh, 50, uh, more, a little bit more than 50% say they have no shortage, but yes, they have shortage up to five uh, drugs uh, for 40%. When we come then to the question, if in uh, uh, the, the, the uh, experience of drug shortage in question 15, you show that uh, is related to community as well to hospital pharmacies. Then you see that uh, nearly 60% say they have a drug shortage in delays uh, of the, from the distribution of industrial production. That means deliverance or not uh, availability of drugs they are asking for. And uh, coming back to the final question, what we started with the contamination infection of uh, our workers are there enough PPEs for pharmacists? And uh, uh, nearly 63% uh, uh, say yes, and 28% uh, uh, say mostly. So only 8% say no, they have not enough equipment. And uh, as well, you see then uh, when the question is occurring, where do you organize your equipment? Uh, mostly they buy the, the equipment themselves, so hospitals or communities. 
or the state is delivering uh, with, uh, with uh, PPEs, only 10% um, provide uh, the government a loan. That means there's 50% say they have enough masks and uh, the gloves and uh, antiseptic solutions for the need for patients. And uh, 36 say mostly and 12% say uh, not. So that means when we uh, look then finally of the presentations uh, from the previous weeks, mm. we see that the situation became a little bit better. But when we see then to the continent, we see that the wave running from east to the west, uh, that we see the wave is running from Europe up to now to, to, uh, to uh, South America and a small amount as well to Africa. Finally, question. We had an information about the uh, increasing number of patients who got COVID um, in Iran. I have discussed with our delegates and she told me they have increased the high number of uh, um, testing with the patients uh, as well, not only those who have uh, uh, solid, uh, um, solid uh, uh, illness shown, but also others and they have then uh, um, found out that there have been a huger number of infection patients but what was not growing in this way to be delivered to hospital care. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Klaus. Uh, first of all, I am checking my microphone again. Okay, everything is fine. Uh, thank you so much for this brief information. It's very good to see uh, everything going fine. Uh, the numbers are decreasing, especially in the European countries. And so it's a good thing to see these results. And also it's very nice things so we are getting the lots of signals from nearly all over the world. Uh, we uh, reach uh, more, more, more than 50 countries and so it's a very uh, good data for uh, us. Thank you so much. And I want to uh, pass the second part of our uh, night tonight. Um, I want to say something and have some opening maybe. Uh, one compare to the last time today, we have more than uh, 4.6 million people around the world have been infected with the coronavirus, COVID-19 virus. It's that type of coronavirus related to the severe acute respiratory syndrome. Uh, as you know, uh, CDC uh, said that it's a, a virus which is uh, spreading mainly from person to person through uh, respiratory droplets produced when an infected per person calls or sneezes. The droplets can hand in the mouths uh, or noses uh, of people who are in close proximity with the infected person or possibly be inhalated into the lungs. Uh, when at first look is a very ordinary thing, but to be anxious and paranoid is common when facing a pandemic especially one that has affected um, the global economy and is predicted to cause a recession soon. Nevertheless, misinformation on social media and fake chain messages on popular communication applications, WhatsApp and other uh, social media things, have hmm. further fueled panic among members of the public. Governments and authorities have urged citizens to check the authenticity of news stories before sharing them with friends and loved ones. We often think uh, I'm a smart person. If I see something that's fake, I realize it and not believe it. Misinformation is something that only affects other people, people who are as smart as um, I am or who have poor critical thinking skills or who vote for a different political party. However, it's not that simple. Everyone can be fooled by misinformation. Physiological research demos demonstrates that noticing errors in what we read is often difficult and that those errors can affect our later beliefs and even when we know they are wrong. What can we do to avoid knowledge neglect and avoid spreading misinformation? One of the most effective techniques is simply to pause and think about whatever a piece of information is true or false. For, so, uh, as you see, uh, sharing information is very, very fast today by using internet and mm, nearly all of us not giving attention that is true or not true. Tonight, we want to discuss more deeply about these 
fake news and how can we avoid them? What are the fake news about, especially about the coronavirus? And we invited Julian Bart. Uh, I want to introduce him uh, to you. We are knowing him very well from our organizations, but I want to introduce to one more. Uh, he is, uh, before 2008, he was the head of Central Cytotoxic Service Department of Pharmacy, uh, University Clinic Essen. After 2008, uh, still he's head of the trial, trial uh, coordination center of STIL. STIL means study group uh, indolent lymphomas uh, uh, in the department of hematology. He's very experienced about clinical tr trials. Uh, he worked, uh, participate on uh, in the phase one, phase two, and phase three uh, clinical trials, uh, over than 200 cases. Um, and also is giving some training, training programs since 1997, specialized, specialist in clinical pharmacy and since 2004, specialist in oncology pharmacy. And he has lots of qualifications uh, like uh, authorized for advanced training in clinical pharmacy by the Regional Association of Pharmacists, lectureship for clinical pharmacy at the Heinrich Hein University in Dusseldorf, uh, member of the Ethics Commission University, University Medical School of Essen, and also teaching assessment at the Rudolf uh, Backheim Institute for Pharmacology Biomedical Research Center of Justus Leib University Gießen, uh, and also is a, a member of several national and international societies like ATCA, ISOP, ESOP, uh, DIGOP, uh, and CESAR. Welcome. Uh, Jürgen, thank you so much for uh, coming tonight to our organization. I want to give the floor to you to give to make your uh, presentation and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, you can share your screen. Everybody can see me and hear me? Yes. Okay. Everybody see me? Yes. Perhaps. Then. Okay, then good evening, everybody. A warm welcome from Germany. Tonight, I will talk about our long burning issue, Corona, COVID, the infection. I will talk about fake news, obfuscated news, preliminary facts or facts. And I try to rectify the infodemic because the coronavirus spreads into um, a million uh, countries in four months, but fake news spreads to millions in no time. I took some headlines by chance and self-selection. I will not talk about every sensational headline. And uh, as a preface, I have to add, we face a new situation, unprecedented crisis with a new disease, Development is not foreseeable. We are still on an ascending branch on a learning curve. Maybe some of the depicted topics I tell you will have to be revised due to the gain of knowledge, of new knowledge because of this fast evolving situation. And maybe next week, maybe I have to tell you everything I told you about COVID is no longer valid, but I don't know. So my slides. In black is my text, in blue is the title of a cited publication, and in green, the free available internet source. Um, already or almost free available full text. This will be provided by ESOP. And I have to say to Ahmed, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is the distribution of this information later on. So, a new but non-threatening disease, what is it? Is it really new? Some people still refuse to accept it, but it is really new. As you might depict from this family tree, the Wuhan strain is over there. And from the sequence-based analysis of isolates from patients, the, uh, the virus was identified as a novel coronavirus. I have a simpler picture of that. It is really new. You can accept it as a new leaf of a branch on the corona tree. 
and the genome of the SARS-CoV-2 has been reported over 80% identical to the previous human coronaviruses. However, it is similar, but at least it is different in 20%, and 20% might cause a lot. So, is it more than just a common cold? The human coronaviruses were discovered in the 1960s in animals and humans and have long been considered inconsequential pathogens causing the common cold in otherwise healthy people. These four strains are very known in Europe and other parts of the world and usually cause common cold with rhinitis, conjunctivitis, other known symptoms including middle ear inflammation, in 5 to 30% of all cases. However, moderate to severe respiratory infections are possible, especially in patients with other underlying, especially cardiopulmonary diseases or organ transplanted patients or immunosuppressive uh, treatment patients, but they never caused a pandemic. This changed at the beginning of the 21st century when SARS uh, and MERS COVID emerged from animal resources to cause global epidemics with alarming morbidity and mortality. And it is just more than a common cold. Inter and intraspecies transmission is possible, as you can see on this very nice picture. However, up to now, only alpha and beta coronavirus have the ability to infect humans, as you can uh, also see here. Here we have question marks. I would not um, state that this will be uh, until eternity. We don't know, but we have very strange things. For instance, a mouse hepatitis coronavirus is known. Mouse hepatitis coronavirus. I don't need it, believe me. So, you saw this picture in color. Um, and additionally, somebody um, compared the assessments of death from COVID-19 and from seasonal influenza. This is an, an interesting viewpoint. I recommend for uh, reading by yourself. And um, if you compare these two deaths, this would be like a comparison uh, of apples and pears. Don't do it. Read this publication, please. And I would um, keep in mind the S in the SARS stands for severe and not for simple. So, are uh, only the lungs affected as the acronym SARS might suggest respiratory syndrome? Of course not, as we know by now. The cardiovascular system is affected. Um, we know problems of coagulopathy, uh, fibrin, hyperfibrinolysis, anticoagulation, um, hypercoagulation, endothelial cell infections, endothelitis, um, very new in children, a Kawasaki-like syndrome is known. Keratoconjunctivitis might be the initial medical presentation of the novel coronavirus disease and neurological manifestations are also known because neuroinvasion is most probably also mediated by the ECE2 receptor, which is expressed in a lot of human tissues and even um, in a lot of neuro neurological tissues, as you can see here from this picture. And how does coronavirus kill? We have multiple battlefields, of course. Um, we have invasion by the nose and the lungs. The ears can be affected. Um, of course, the heart, the blood vessels, but also the liver, the kidneys, and the intestine. And again, I uh, found interesting this subheadline buffeting the brain. We have a lot of symptoms, inflam inflammation in a sense of encephalitis, seizures. Um, some people briefly lose their consciousness and what you all might know, many uh, people lose their sense of smell temporarily. So, some unsound headlines. What about ibuprofen and corona? This happened in March 22, 2020, sorry. 
A voicemail distributed viral via WhatsApp and other social media states that the use of ibuprofen leads to a severe cause of COVID infection. This should be alleged a research result from the University of Vienna. On March 15 already, the university renounces these reports. You can look it up still on this internet link. Unluckily, this statement was sparked by the French Minister of Health and resulted in a temporary recommendation of the WHO to use paracetamol instead. This led to a paracetamol shortage in Europe due to panic buying in connection with an export ban for 26 drugs from India, including paracetamol. As you might know, the active ingredients are synthesized in um, China and then transferred to India where the uh, pharmaceutical formulation is done and they uh, led a ban on the export of these. And by the way, the primary primordial scientific discussion, the scientific discussion, was triggered by a subordinate clause in a letter published in the Lansing dealing with a potential higher risk for diabetic and hypertensive patients. You can look it up using this uh, hypernet link. On March the 18th, the WHO re retracted its recommendation due to the lack of data. However, it came to, uh, in, into appearance, France has some trouble with ibuprofen since years and the OTC telling, uh, selling is under restrictive conditions. This it was despite reliable evidence and a dangerous bashing on ibuprofen as this German guy commented in the pharmaceutical press. Critical question, should a national problem be resolved on the European level, facilitated by a fake news? I don't have an answer for that and I don't want to answer for that. But in May, the safety committee of EMA, the PRAC, again initiated by France, stated a review of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines ibuprofen and kitoprofen and the result was Patients and healthcare professionals can continue using these drugs as per the approved product information. I recommend also further reading for details this Medscape review article. And it seems uh, by now that uh, everything changes into the contrary. As you might see, this is from last week. Now we are testing a lipid ibuprofen formulation, lipid, not liquid formulation, which, um, and the question is, is it um, possible that this formulation can facilitate breathing of hospitalized corona patients, which are under ventilation, for instance, yeah? You can also look it up at clingletrials.gov uh, under the Liberate trial, and this is the lipid formulation, and um, you might ask or regard it as from the bad to the good guy. In my opinion, ibuprofen has never been the bad guy. So how dangerous are ACE and 81 inhibitors? COVID and the RAS system, as I mentioned in the neuro neurological session, um, ACE2, the enzyme, serves as the port of enter uh, in the human system. There is an interaction between the SARS viruses and the ACE2, um, and this has been pro proposed as a potential factor for infectivity. And there rose concerns about the use of RAS inhibitors that may alter ACE2 level and whether variation in ACE expression may be in part responsible for the disease virulence in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So the question is, should RAS inhibitors be withdrawn? The answer is no, because you might achieve an unintended consequence of a premature discontinuing proven therapy in response to only a hypothetical concerns. And what we know by now is RAS inhibitors may be associated with a lower incidence and or improved outcome in patients with lower respiratory tract infections. And RAS inhibitors are not associated with the severity or mortality of COVID-19. Um, and there is no association between RAS inhibitors 
and the COVID test positivity. That means if you take a RAS inhibitor, you are not at a higher risk to get an infection. Clinical data support current professional society guidelines not to discontinue RAS inhibitors. And the statement of the European Society of Hypertension is there is currently no reason to discontinue RAS blockers in stable patient, patients facing the COVID-19 pandemic. What about interventional drugs for the treatment? Well, again, it is a new disease. We have a new confusing situation with an unprecedented crisis. We have no proven effective drugs. This leads to a dangerous situation. Medical need is great. Quick help is desirable. That's the point. Well, what has been done? First of all, a compassionate use done by a pharmaceutical company. And compassionate use has something to do with generosity because um, the uh, social community has no costs for the tested drugs, maybe no other costs. However, <clears throat> a compassionate use is not randomized and not controlled. This is the nature of a CU, of course. However, in this publication, um, it's not reported which patients were included or which patients were denied to receive remdesivir. We have no information about that. There is no predefined endpoint. You might uh, argue, okay, this is problematic um, because we are testing a drug and we'll, we will see what can be achieved. However, it can be important to prevent cherry picking endpoints in a post hoc fashion in the means of later uh, study analysis. And the initial inclusion criterion was anyone saturating 94% or less on room air. That means, from the critical point of view, this allows the study to include some patients who are minimally ill. Another question, another unanswered question is, why was Remdesivir given so late? The median um, administration was on day 12 after onset of symptoms. Why that? Why so late? Is this cherry picking patients? The natural cause of COVID is generally to deteriorate before day 12. By day 12, after symptom onset, viremia is generally beginning to decrease. So if you select a group of patients who are still doing okay on day 12, the patients are likely to continue doing fine and the drug appears in a good light. Hmm. So what have we learned from that CU? Ask yourself. Again, this slide, again, the medical need is great. Quick help is desirable, however, this cannot be conjured by a quick conducted and carelessly analyzed study. One example, the hydroxychloroquine and acetriomycin treatment, the so-called Raoult study. What is the weakness or the weaknesses of the study? At the time of publication, the study was ongoing, pre-printed, unreviewed, and we saw preliminary results. The study is not randomized. The so-called control group exists of patients from different hospitals and patients who refused the treatment or had other exclusion criteria, uh, for example, a known allergy, retinopathy, G6PD deficiency, QT prolongation, and not otherwise specified. The patients are not comparable. Patients on the experimental arm are in average 10 years older than the control group, the so-called control group, because they were 51 years old versus um, 30, uh, 70, uh, 37 years old. That means the groups are largely imbalanced. Luckily, this study was pre-registered in the EU, EU clinical trials register. This is the internet address and the pre-specified endpoints were copy pasted from by me from that register, and they were results of SARS co-virus detection, primary endpoint. Evaluation day one, four, seven, and day 14 from the start of the treatment. 
secondary endpoints, apyrexemia, normalization of respiratory rate, average length on, uh, of hospital stay and mortality evaluated at the same time points. What did they report? Virological clearance at day six post inclusion as a primary endpoint. What is this? Secondary outcomes, virological clearance over time with some parameters stated here, occurrence of side effects, and they did exclude patients. 42 patients were included, 26 patients uh, received hydroxychloroquine, the other 16 were controls. What did they report? They report the outcome about 20 patients. What about the six others on hydroxychloroquine? They report six patients are lost for follow-up due to early termination of the treatment. Did they recover and ran away or what did they do? This is not a good analytics. Meanwhile, due to security reasons, cardiovascular side effects, even the WHO temporarily paused its solidarity trial. I read today, um, most probably it will resume again. So we have a CU by the pharmaceutical company and we have a clinical trial with hydroxychloroquine. And what do they show again? Those in a hurry should go slowly. This sentence was created by Lothar Seiwert, not by Confucius. So don't draw your conclusions too hasty or uh, to put it in more colloquial words, don't jump the gun. What about this guy, Dr. Trump recommends UV rays and sanitizers. Well, I must admit, um, after this statement, I saw the fastest acting and shortest publication by the New England Journal of Medicine, only one page, very well designed headline, article, background, method, conclusion. I will magnify this for you. We read the labels on the bottles we found in the janitory closet and the conclusion is this will kill you. Very short, very precise, and of course, a fake article, but an intelligent one. So there are a lot remaining unanswered questions. What about post-infection immunity? If achievable, how long will it last? And colleagues, I'm a little bit disappointed um, and not so optimistic after reading this article about analytical tests, diagnostic tests. You can also get it from the internet. And I would like to draw your attention to these two curves. As we all know, zero conversion occurs as earliest from week two on. IgM and IgG levels are rising. A complete zero conversion to IgM, uh, to IgG, sorry, will occur, but what is a little bit frightening and of course disappointing, according to this graphic, the curve diminished from week four on again. What does that mean? I don't know, but this could be a very well, critical and disappointing point. What about vaccination or even compulsory vaccination? What about the proof of vaccination? And the term immunity passports was created. On the first glance, this has something to do with security because if I can prove you my immunity, this is something to do with safety. You are protected because I am immune. You are not in danger, you are not at risk. On the second glance, this might have something to do um, with uh, several uh, uh, deficiencies and um, discrimination. Discrimination is the correct word because I am immune. I have an immune passport. You don't have it. I am very sorry. I cannot allow you to travel everywhere. I cannot allow you to work everywhere. 
I cannot allow you to go to a restaurant, a cinema, or something like that. This, of course, um, is very explosive, and especially from the ethical point of view, and this would also be also burst our time frame for this evening. So again, I recommend two publications for reading from the ethical point of view. Beyond tomorrow, privileges and immunity certification and immunity passports. Make it um, and take the judgment by yourself. So my closing remarks, stay healthy, keep a clear mind, beware of conspiracy theorists and covidiots. Covidiots, this um, term was not created by me, uh, although it's good. You can read it on the Urban Dictionary on the internet. And concerning conspiracy theorists, I have um, almost all COVID-19 conspiracy theories in one illustration. That is this, my uh, devilish tower um, control the bed and this uh, infected the toilet making industry or something like that. And even the head of the WHO states, we also are fighting a pandemic of lies. So at this point, I say thank you for listening and I try to make the screen great again. Ahmed, it's your turn. Microphone is on. Thank you so much, Yugan. It was a very nice, very open, very clear uh, presentation. Firstly, I want to say I was afraid much more after listening to you. You have prepared a very nice presentation. Thank you for uh, this. And also, I want to say something uh, to our attendants. Our speaker also shared some uh, web address, some website addresses on very important topics. Uh, we will share these links with you in uh, in the first newsletter, uh, yeah, first next new newsletter of our association. Uh, you can uh, I collected the questions from our attend uh, our our people. I want to ask one by one. Um, the first question is uh, from short to long. I will ask the first question is like this what is the easiest way to verify uh, true and false news do you have uh, do you know any <laughs> website or something like that oh there is no receipt for that um, the best way <laughs> the best way is to use your brain <laughs> yes. is it uh, be critical can this be true um, I only can use several examples. To my understanding, um, I cannot understand in the face of 1,000 to 100,000 of deaths, how people, even scientists, so-called viro uh, virologists, um, state things like, it is only a common cold. Um, and even the spreading tells us it is, of course, something other. Um, it's very difficult, but um, um, one criterion is that uh, these fake news or these um, critical news are always against the mainstream. They bear something like um, the forces behind the curtain, uh, forces you never saw, we all uh, only know them from James Bond, yeah? Like uh, Spectra or something like that. Who is acting behind the curtains? Who shall that be? It is very difficult. Yeah. Keep a clear mind. However, I said keep a clear mind and a clear brain. As you saw, also the brain can be infected. <laughs> it could be a point. <laughs> yes, 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 you are right. I think everybody is on the same point because the second question is a little bit uh, interested with the same uh, topic. Uh, the second question is like, I think that false news can be easily captured and deleted by programs like Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It says uh, if the states, if the countries want these news to spread, what's the reason for this? What do you think about this? I have no idea. <laughs> I really have no idea about these news. Um, these news are always against the mainstream, against the uh, official media. Let me say in countries like this, um, we have a negative example um, uh, for, the mo uh, for, for the moment uh, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they drop their death rates because um, if they do so, they do not have to invest um, in uh, um, medicine and uh, um, um, medical services. Um, these few peoples in the government and around can use the money for their own. Um, this would be a little bit problematic in uh, especially in europe in the eu the western europe um it's another case mm -hmm. um yeah, well it is it is difficult i have i don't have a clear answer for that yeah i think so um the last question uh Maybe you give some clue and say, said a few things about it, but uh, the question is very hard asking to, to do the question again. And saying that Lancet, you know, very one of mm -hmm. the, most and the most respected medical journals, yep. took an unprecedented uh, step on in, in its history and withdrew the research that led to the cessation of use of hydroxychloroquine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know it. How I know it. How can a mistake be made in a matter of life and that of death for thousands of people? Um, first of all, um, this is not the first retraction um, done by the Lancet. Mm -hmm. I know several others. Um, it was, of course, done to retain the quality of the journal. And the background is that even um, the authors of the retracted article well, you might say, you better do it, you better do everything by yourself. Um, the used database um, is not reliable. And um, the people um, of the database um, did not offer all um, data which were used for validation. And so the, the, it were the authors uh, writing to the Lancet, we are not sure about our conclusions. We cannot trust the used database. So please retract our article. It was not intended by the Lancet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I have a slide for that. <clears throat> yes, very big problem. There was, and in connection, there was an, uh, one of the authors was the same and um, uh, one of the uh, the author group was the CEO of the database used. A second um, publication was retracted from a journal of um, cardiology. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, but I don't know exactly uh, the title of the journal. No. Yes, true, exactly. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for this answer also. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to say again, uh, thank you for coming to our organization tonight. Yep. Uh, I'm going to the end, but before that, I yep. want to explain people um, an important thing. After uh, the end, uh, I want to remind you, we are going uh, further the next two weeks and uh, every two weeks, uh, we will have another webinar. And uh, who will be the speaker? It will be a surprise for you. I will. Uh, share in the further days uh, before closing the session uh, if you want to say a few sentence also close you uh, i will get your uh, last sentence and then i will close tonight well, okay uh, thanks a lot uh, at, uh, at first uh, jürgen um, you know what can we do in 15 minutes when the pages of uh, journals are full with everything over weeks so it uh, it's just a small a small lightning uh, time 
to show that uh, this is very necessary to, to base on science and also discussion about science can lead us step by step to the, to the more understanding. Nobody has, be, has been born with the understanding about the everything what has not been happened before. So that's what I think it's the main message. And the people have to be teached that not every new message would be then the final result. Uh, science leads us to, uh, to exchange and to research and to, to not to trust in everything what was newborn and uh, really surprising. So thanks a lot for this. We have to go ahead with, uh, uh, with in the future. We as a strong society are doing this. I'm very proud of all our people all around the world to, to lift up their data week by week. And I'm sure that the next uh, two weeks we go ahead to, to stabilize it. And uh, for sure we will present this to the General Assembly what will be in the, in the beginning of July. So thanks a lot for this evening. Thanks a lot for all your presence and up to now, hopefully soon again, uh, personally, and not only by electronic devices. Thanks yes. a lot. <laughs> exactly. So <clears throat> thank you so much. And I'm closing tonight. Uh, I want to say bye-bye, see you until our next Spreading to others is the N95. The novel coronavirus continues to cause a lot of work. There are now close to 30 countries with confirmed cases. Thousands of people have it. I think that it is pretty safe.